Once again, no feedbacks, uh, logo, their chat cover. Pretty interesting. I still have not quite managed to see the feedback bubble, but it looks like they're both off. Snowcrow's had about a one second lead out on them, and they are on the move. It's a cheese wedge, man. It's a cheese wedge. That's what their logo is. What does cheese have to do with feedback? <laughs> mm. You could play into how cheesy it is, or how much you can cheese things with it, I guess. Who knows? Both teams mm. don't have it, it's pretty bad. Skip past the initial dredge uh, trash mobs. They'll be pathing this first this group. And they're on the move. And they are on to the first boss. Both teams getting pretty good DPS burn here. Both making use of plenty of AoEs to deal with any ads that might have followed them, or the ads that came with the boss. And it looks like no feedback killed the boss about a second faster. They're both pretty much neck and neck. Looks like an unskippable cutscene. And the teams are on the move. Yep, there are some corridors and stuff that you really only see in story mode in this dungeon. Pretty interesting uh, place. The last boss fight is definitely a unique one. I think it's actually pretty cool. But it looks like both teams are on to the golem. As Abe, I suppose, from a distance, it would seem, probably they trying to hack back there. Burning down Noko. You can see that AoE damage that Noko puts out. You do not want to stand in that. Additionally, that knockback makes him very melee unfriendly. We saw lots of ranged DPS there for once in the speed clearing attempt. Yeah, who knows, five bow bears might be the optimal composition for that fight. Looks like both teams are stealthing past these mobs. Grabbing gears to get that door up and running as quickly as possible. No feedback seems to be a few seconds ahead at this point. And they're using FGS for even more mobility. So yeah, it looks like they've come into the, uh, the, I guess, meeting place for all of the little dredge, the Moletaria, which is seen in uh, SE Path 2, where you fight the last boss. It looks like they'll be moving right through this door up here into the tunnel, as Snowcrows is right behind, no feedback coming into the tunnel as well. Abe running without a main hand weapon. There Who we needs go. a main hand weapon? All you need is an offhand when you're a hacker like Abe. It looks like Snowcrows managed to close the speed gap that No Feedback had and they are at virtually at identical times. Both proceeding to LOS spots for this next event where they have to defend, I believe, Zoja as she opens the door. Looks like we have a warrior ping Doliac Signet in uh, chat for no feedback. Hopefully he's comboing that with his Sentinel's armor or maybe even Nomads for extra healing power. And his Banner of Tactics and Banner of Defense. Absolutely. And here come the mobs uh, for both teams starting the pull. I'd say that the progress bar might be slightly ahead for no feedback, but it's still very close. This one's going to come down to... Uh, the wire. Abe running an interesting uh, build, a 5522. That's definitely a very uh, DPS heavy build. Right, but it's a very good choice if you have two Ellie's in party. You don't need both to be running persisting flames if one of them, or if you don't need it for your build, for a staff build. So 
looks like the progress bar is at about right under 50% for no feedback. Probably closer to about 45 for snow crows. This event, not the most exciting event ever. It's just a steady trickle of trash mobs coming in while a bar fills up. One of the only time-gated events in dungeons. Probably the only one. I can't think of any other time-gated dungeon events off the top of my head, that's for sure. I think everyone just sounds tired because everyone's been playing Destiny, and it's the most boring game in existence. What? <laughs> Looks like no feedback is very close to this event being over. Same for Snow Crows. I think we're going to see whatever differences are going to be uh, telling will come at the Kudu fight. Absolutely. The Kudu fight is definitely going to be interesting, but he's not... Kudu is a really strange villain because he goes from being like a pale little Azura to being a purple demon rat thing by the time you get to COE story. But I think he's relatively normal in this path whenever we fight him. He's not quite been twisted by dragon magic yet. But tiny purple rats are kind of a terrifying thing to see. Here we go, Loopy. Rats the event's about to end. Are... They still had a few trash mobs they hadn't finished yet. Hopefully it doesn't... Leaving their LOS spot early doesn't cost them anything. Snowcrow's doing the same thing. Both teams are on the move. They are both approaching Kudu. Now, like I said, Kudu, every 25% will summon a golem who does uh, very significant damage. Uh, each golem has slightly different mechanics and will have to be uh, taken with care to avoid uh, getting the team wiped. Although it looks like no feedback had no trouble with that first golem. Snowcrow's using a quick frostbow to disable the golem while they DPS it down. And, there, and now it looks like the second golem has come up for no feedback. They have the ice bow on it. And they're keeping their reflex up. And they seem to be having no problem with this event. Yeah, Kudu is almost dead. The The last golem has come out, it seems. So no Bros is just a few seconds behind. Yep, no feedback has, is on to the final Kudu burn. They're going to take him down. And they will be moving on to the next event. They handled that very well. Both teams handled it pretty well. That event can go horribly wrong if those golems are allowed to, to get their attacks off. Those reflex and CCs are very important in making sure that fight goes smoothly. Snowcrows is going to have to figure out how to make up some time here. They're a few seconds behind. Some strong DPS should help. That is not something, though, that no feedback has a problem with. They seem to have just as good a DPS. Indeed. And they are moving on to the next event. Snow crows seem a little bit short on their stability for this golem. But they are through. We have an unskippable cutscene before the Iron Forgeman. And this is the last event of this dungeon. Any Guild Wars 1 fans will remember this boss as the end boss of Sorrow's Furnace. Probably one of the coolest bosses. I'd say it's probably one of the coolest bosses in this game, too. Absolutely, just not seen that often. I'll be interested to see what strategies the team try to pull off for it. Looks like no feedback's holding on to their... Slight advantage in time. Arcade Looks style like... bosses like this are quite entertaining, and I think I would like to see this sort of be the direction that at least end bosses move in uh, later on in future Guild Wars 2 content. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. 
it's cinematic to see, it's gigantic to fight, it's pretty cool, and it feels rewarding when you're able to take down something so huge. Interesting choice of words, Priscilla. Why is that? No feedback has the boss at about 33%. And it looks like Snowcrow is just a little bit behind. Snowcrow is going to need a very strong burn on the next phase. If they want to catch up. But I don't know if they're going to be able to. It's going to take a big disaster. And that is it! No feedback takes game one in a in a upset, I would say, that most people would have expected Snowcrows to take that. Indeed. But they have done it. Congrats to no feedback taking game one. And we are moving on to a raw path one.